Welcome to the Sketch Cover Comic Cast. Welcome to the Sketch Cover Comic Cast. We are so glad you're here. And if you're wondering, hey, doesn't James usually open up these shows? Well, you'd be right. Uh, actually, James and his awesome family are on vacation this week, so he couldn't make it for this show. But fear not. I am here, but I am not alone, and I've got an amazing guest with me. And guys, you might even call this guy the king of the monster artists. I got Matt <laughs> with me. And uh, Matt, thanks so much for joining me, man. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I, I, I appreciate the uh, very generous intro. Uh, yeah, we've been <laughs> we've been trying to you know get this uh, get this set up for a little while, and it's nice to finally uh, you know make time for it. But that's the song that's a song and dance I do every time I have an interview because yeah. my schedule is just so uh, so crazy. But uh, but yeah yeah I'm excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Awesome, man. Yeah, we're happy to have you, dude. Again, when I when you when I reached out to you, I was like, man, he's probably super busy. I see you doing stuff for G Fest all over the place. I'm like, there's probably no way he's got time for this for this podcast. But dude, you're like, heck yeah, I'm there. I'm like, okay, okay. This guy is this guy. Awesome. <laughs> Don't look any draw, but he's a nice Aww. guy too. So it's it's good. Cool, but, uh, but, <laughs> right on. Thank uh, you. We start off every podcast uh, just talking about family life, and you know what? Let me just backtrack a little bit, guys. If you're not familiar <clears throat> with Matt Frank, he's done some incredible artwork for some awesome uh, fandoms out there. Namely, I'd say the most predominant one is probably Godzilla. I think he is <clears throat> one of the top tier Godzilla artists out there. If I say so myself, <laughs> and, uh, Godzilla rulers of Earth does some stuff with uh transformers currently working on is it red man is that correct yes red man is the uh the main uh thing i've been working on with my time which is a very exciting property to uh to work on but i mean we can talk about that now or we can talk about that later you know however you want to do it <laughs> i got you we'll get into it but i just want to make sure they know that you you've definitely done a lot of artwork for some some big time properties from power rangers and whatnot just some some cool stuff or some great uh phantoms out there but um thank you but dude what is it like in the house of Matt Frank? I mean, are you married? You got kids? <laughs> is it a house of long boxes, short boxes, or is it a house of monsters? I mean, what is it like <laughs> for uh, for Matt Frank? Well, I appreciate that. I mean, y- yes, I am married. Uh, we just celebrated our fourth anniversary. We've been together for about, I want to say, uh, 11, 10 years, 11 years. I think we've been together for about 11 years. And awesome. yeah, thank you. And uh uh, yeah, our house. I mean, I've got a couple of long boxes, but uh, <laughs> but I've I've uh, really what it, what I have is is monster stuff. I've got a lot, a lot of kaiju. I've got a lot of Godzilla <laughs> stuff. I've got a lot of Ultraman stuff. I've got a fair number of Transformers, although I've had to whittle the I had to cut back on those a little a little bit because man there's only so many optimus primes i can buy and um (laughs) you know uh but yeah beyond that you know we're just uh we live we live just outside of austin texas we we've lived here i've lived in texas my whole life you know born and raised in san antonio uh moved to austin to go to school met my wife and then we just uh we got a house now and um we don't we don't have any kids at the moment uh you know just it's just one of those things where i i personally believe that like you know there's there's no there should never be any pressure to do it as soon as possible but that's a you know that's a tricky subject for everybody but um (laughs) but we've got you know we've got our dog and we've got our cat who just i don't know if that came through in the audio the cat just uh blundered into a bunch of stuff because (laughs) she was trying to get to my windowsill um so it's just (laughs) um i'm like okay thanks uh but yeah that's that's about the gist of it and you know it just we got a lot of stuff and I mean, I, I, I just started posting stuff on my YouTube channel and uh, my backdrop is just my studio, which is just um, a bunch of Kaiju stuff. And a, just, a, you, you can, people can see like, I've got my power Rangers. I've got my Godzilla's. I've got my, some Jurassic park stuff. That's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Well, what is, uh, what does your wife think of all the, the monsters and stuff? Is she into it as well? Or did she <laughs> kind of fall into it when, when she met you? Well, the way I've described it is um, uh, she was dragged into this fandom kicking and screaming. Um, (laughs) That's not necessarily that's not necessarily true, though. Uh, I don't think she fully comprehended how deep the rabbit hole went when we first started dating. Uh, 
but she's pretty uh, been pretty uh, pretty tolerant of it over the years she she doesn't like like live and breathe and think about it the way i do all the time um but she's come to appreciate many aspects of it. and i think it's a testament to our relationship that <laughs> she's like she's been so cool about it and she doesn't like she's never been the kind of person to be like well if we're gonna move in together you need to get rid of x y and z <laughs> right. i've i've made adjustments based on 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 her and the things that i know she's like for, like for example um you know if we're gonna put if i'm gonna put i've got my stuff in my studio that i like to put up and put out on display in my studio but the rest of the house i try to keep that stuff to a relative minimum because you know it's not just my space it's her space too and she has uh, very particular decorating senses so i want to <laughs> i want to acquiesce to that um I gotcha. yeah but anyway uh yeah, that's it in a nutshell she's she is i i have gotten her into a few aspects of it there's <laughs> it's whenever we go to g-fest it's so funny because she has fun. She really likes going to G Fest. She's got a lot of friends there now. Uh, she actually was on a panel at G Fest this year, which was really fun. Really? Um, yeah, she was on a a women in the G fandom panel with a, a number of other lady fans really? who, uh, yeah, and they they basically just were talking about talk how to talk to girls, how to uh, <laughs> how because it is a male it is a male dominated fandom and. Sure. And you know, the, and, but there are lady fans. There's more more lady fans every day, and there always have been. It's just, you know, and I think it was nice of, nice for them to be able to talk about that. <clears throat> but she's she is really into Ultraman. Uh, I got her into Ultraman awesome. a few years ago, and uh, that's been a lot of fun. She's got a, 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 a small collection of her own now. Like whenever we go to G Fest, we'll go to the dealer's room for a little bit and just go poke around, and and, and she's kind of like. I could tell when she goes in, she's kind of like, oh, I'm not, this is a, you know, this stuff's neat, but it's not really for me. And inevitably we walk out with a small, like hand, <laughs> like armful of stuff. And it's usually, yeah. it's usually Baltan Sajin from Ultraman, the uh, lobster looking dude. She really likes that character <laughs> for some reason. And so, that's awesome. yeah, it's really cute, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's it. You know, she's pretty casual about it, pretty chill about it. She's got her own things that she's into. So that is awesome. That is like fantastic. I love. I know when I got <laughs> married, and uh, I my wife had to discover, you know, all my nerdisms. You know, uh-huh, with uh-huh. comics. And yes, even like I again, I got the a gigantic just stack of old Godzilla. I used to have a ton of VHSs, but I had to retire uh-huh. them. But anyway, moved on to DVDs and now Blu-rays, sure. and whatever else. And she just thought they were ridiculous. But I was like, babe, these are like gold. Like uh, these are amazing. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I've watched them since I was four years old, and you know now about almost at 30 years old I'm like man this is just like the just still great every time i watch them but sure. anyway uh but yeah i can definitely relate my wife she uh she it was a slow bring into the different fandoms but uh she's she's come along and she's actually learned to accept a lot of it and enjoy a lot of it with me so that's really cool man i think yeah. you're inspiring a lot of kaiju lovers out there that there is hope fear not there is hope <laughs> well i mean it, it helps to to find somebody who shares your interests and lord knows lord. now it's easier than ever to find someone who's into the stuff you are there's a uh <laughs> i'm actually reminded of a uh there's a I, I, there's a pretty a pretty fa- uh low-key viral post that was being shared around the internet a few, few years back when the 2014 godzilla was coming out and the uh i think it was from ok cupid or one of those dating sites oh, wow. and some guy had some some girl had on her profile that she was a fan of godzilla and some guy sent her a message and was like Oh yeah, I totally like what did he say? Gozira as well. And then in parentheses, he's all that's how the Japanese say Godzilla. Oh my god. And she wrote back, it's Gojira, you blanking plebeian. Um <laughs> Yeah, it was very cool. So so the, you know, uh, and, and and so there are, you know, I I, I think that, that finding someone who shares those interests is is more possible than it ever was. But, you know, that's not to say that it won't like you won't just find somebody who just likes you for you and just likes your personality and just wants to wants to roll with you. And, you know, you know, I'm not 
I wouldn't say I'm like a super, I, I'm not super into Star Trek, but my wife really likes Star Trek and yeah. I like watching it with her and she, you know, it's, it's fun. So there you go. That's awesome. Well, let's shift things a little bit and let's go on to Mr. Matt Frank himself. Yay. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me. Dude, like, again, I, I've already said it and I think a lot of listeners would agree that I, I, I think you're undoubtedly one of the top tier kaiju artists like out there. Mm. I think you're phenomenal. I think there's a reason IDW hired you. And, and when mm. I heard actually that IDW was bringing you on for the Godzilla Rulers of Earth series i was like i don't care if the story's good or not i'm getting it just for the art it's, <laughs> it's great stuff but i want to ask when did your love for monsters start you know because just again to, to bring fans into getting to know matt frank personally but you mm-hmm. know when did you get into kaiju and how did that you know affect you you know or lead you into getting into art with it i think that and i've thought about this in the past and i think that a large part of it comes down to a couple of universal factors like one you're a kid you kids and kids love dinosaurs like dinosaurs are sort of a quintessential i don't say purely american experience but that is a um that is definitely a thing that a lot of kids like kids just like dinosaurs and kids also like to draw not you know mostly just because it's just something to do with your hands and keep you a little uh ragamuffins in line and uh, (laughs) keep you keep you off the streets and (laughs) And lots of kids like to like to draw and like to be creative. And it's just a question of whether or not those uh, neural pathways connect to where you're like, I just want to do this forever. And um, and then, of course, with, when it comes to dinosaurs, you're just like d- the, the kaiju sort of become an escalation point from dinosaurs like. Mm-hmm. dinosaurs are great because you're just you're like oh my gosh this is these are they're like monsters but they were real and you get to memorize all the names and you get to and you get to study them and and memorize all the facts and stuff and then of course um mm-hmm. and and your parents generally will encourage it because it's it's real it's educational and then of, of once you reach a certain age so they're just like all right it's enough of the dinosaurs uh but um <laughs> But with Godzilla and Kaiju and stuff like that, that was sort of a logical next step because then you're like, oh my gosh, there's like this dinosaur called Godzilla. He's like the biggest, baddest dinosaur ever. And he's, and he's in cities and he's yeah. smashing cities and, and <laughs> in the modern world. And he has superpowers and mm-hmm. he's got a whole series of films about him, <laughs> just him. And it's it's like this gold mine i mean i remember specifically as a kid like a lot of um a lot of folks my generation grew up having to search for godzilla movies in blockbuster video and other video rental places and uh, you know as opposed to the generation before me which you know we they just had to they had to wait until it uh, until a, a monster movie came on the million dollar movie or something on tbs or whatever or on your local a uh, horror show host station yeah. and you know and uh, as opposed to us where we we sometimes they came on television but for the most part you could run to a different you you like go to this blockbuster this blockbuster has Godzilla versus Megalon and Son of Godzilla. But then we're going to go over to this Hollywood video because this Hollywood video has Godzilla versus Biollante and uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. And then you get, you know, and it just goes, and because there was no internet, it became like a scavenger hunt. You're looking for stuff and never really knowing where it's going to stop and where it right. starts. So you got to figure you got to do the legwork and figure it out yourself. That, that's really kind of where it started. And, and I just wanted to draw Godzilla. That's where, where things kind of coalesced, you know, because <laughs> I was, I was reading the dark horse comic when I was a kid and I was collecting the trend masters figures, which came with those cool uh, trading Godzilla trading cards. And so I wanted cool. to draw, wanted to draw like that. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I remember getting my grandfather actually introduced me to the, uh, this 1970s Godzilla when uh, Marvel had the property. And I, oh, and at those first, are great I comics. Kind of like, okay. But then as it got just progressively got better and better, mm. and I just fell in love with it when they brought like Devil Dinosaur into it and they were, oh, they were yeah. fighting. And I was like, oh, this is just the best thing ever. You know, and then what, eventually just yeah. moved on to Dark Horse. But here's a fun question like, what did you prefer? Did you prefer 70s Marvel or when DC got the property? I, I think the Dark Horse at the time, the Dark Horse comics were really my jam because they were 
they were a little more modern. Uh, Godzilla looked like Godzilla, and uh, the uh, artwork was so elaborate, especially with those killer covers by Art Adams and Bob Eggleton. Mm -hmm. And then you crack it open, and you got all these, you know, really elaborate, really elaborate, beautiful artwork by a a really nice uh, rotating cast of artists. I, I think, though, when I look back on it, I think I prefer the Marvel comics just a little bit more because <laughs> they really got crazy with it. Like, yeah, they, did. They, they got really inventive with it. Like, the, like the, the Dark Horse comics are fun, and they've got some really good moments, and uh, they really, you know, put in the work to try to create their own versions of, like, you know, you had Cybersaur and right. Bagora and... You know, you, uh, the Diani, which were a giant, these giant uh, race of uh, alien bounty hunters. Yeah, or ba- alien. That, that issue. Godzilla versus everybody. <laughs> I love that cover so much. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, it's so great. And uh, yeah, and so you have all these really fun, you have all these really fun um, moments. But I just think the Marvel comics, I think the Marvel comics are just a tiny bit better written because they're a little more operatic. They're a little more bombastic and operatic in the way they're written godzilla they really did a pretty good job of characterizing godzilla in a way that i feel like the uh, dark horse comic sort of slacked a little bit Mm -hmm. he's more of just a an amoral force of nature in the dark horse comics as opposed to he's a fully fledged character in the marvel comics where he's a little bit like the hulk where he's he kind of just wants to be left alone he doesn't hate humans though he's just very um like there's a great moment uh, in an issue where Godzilla is being <laughs> Godzilla's being chased by these ranchers, these ranch hands oh. out out in the American West somewhere. <laughs> and, yeah. and apparently and you have to remember, this is the 1970s. There were whole swaths of the country that didn't even know who Godzilla was, yeah. even though he's rampaging across the country. They didn't they had like maybe a radio and maybe a television <laughs> and it had maybe two channels or something. And some right. of them didn't even know who Godzilla was. So here comes this giant lizard and they're chasing him on their horses and stuff. And there's a moment when Godzilla knows they're chasing him, but then he basically walks into this box Canyon and he turns around and there's this great full page panel where he turns and the narration says Godzilla wanted to avoid this, you know, because he doesn't <laughs> yeah. want to hurt anybody, but he's like, really? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I can kill all of you. Right. Right. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I just say, I just, I really, I really appreciate the Marvel comic and I'm sure I, I'll have more to say on the whole Marvel Godzilla universe, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> I got you. That's awesome. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would agree. I, the, the, I think the Marvel edition is, is just classic from him getting shrunk down to like the size of a rat and then fighting the fantastic four is just, oh. It's good some stuff. Great stuff. And like, you know, uh, almost doing like a strongman competition, like between him and Thor of who can push <laughs> the building. Uh, know, it like, it's oh. so good. Yeah, it's just it's it's gold. I, and I, I miss stuff like that. Well, okay, well, here's a here's again another fun question for you. But mm-hmm. uh, if you had to choose between like a, a an American superhero comic book or, or a kaiju, who is your favorite character or even growing up? Who is your favorite? Character? I mean, that's a really difficult question because I just, I just, I mean, aside from like my knee jerk reaction of just Godzilla, I don't really, I have a certain character. I have certain franchises that I follow, you know, there's other stuff that I'm a little more casual about where I'm like, Oh, that's neat. But I don't actively seek it out or pursue it. But like as a kid i was super into power rangers and i still am i'm a little more into the well whenever i can get my hands on it i'm a little more into the sentai side of things now and i really like the work boom has been doing on the power rangers book uh their their power rangers books are are really pretty solid but um Mm -hmm. uh i don't know um I don't really have a, a solid answer for that because I just like, there are lots of characters that I like for different reasons. You know, for example, I've always had a soft spot for Spider-Man mm-hmm. just as far as the Marvel side of thing go, things go, because those, those books always spoke to me. Like I, I really, really got into ultimate Spider-Man back when it first came out oh, cool. around yeah. when the Sam Raimi movies kicked off. Yeah. A lot of it kind of comes back to Kaiju. It comes back to, the 
you know, Ultraman was something that as I've actually gotten older, I've gotten more into, especially now because I'm working for the companies. I'm trying to absorb as much of it as I can. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a, I'm going to have to give a non-committal shrug to that one because I just don't have an, I just don't have like a drop dead favorite that I've, I've held on to uh, because I've, I've held on to so many characters. I got you. No, that that's yeah. that is an acceptable answer. I think we'll take it. I think <laughs> All right. You, yeah, there's there's so much out there, man. I know that even by myself, again, I read a lot of comics in general, and uh, I mean, a lot of the times I have a hard time when someone asks me what's my favorite comic. Most of the mm-hmm. time, it's hard to answer, but I mean, yeah, I, I usually can dwindle it down to a few, but then it's like I can't choose between the few. They're just they're, they're just all of a special place. But, sure. Uh, but that that's awesome, man. Uh, well, here's a, a, another question. Um. As far as a project I know you worked on, but uh, maybe our fans may not know about, but can you tell us like, what was Project Nemesis? Was that your baby mm. or was that in conjunction with someone else? Uh, that's a really interesting story because Nemesis uh, was the brainchild of Jeremy Robinson, who is a, uh, a novelist who pretty much has been doing his own thing for a while now. He's an extremely prolific author. He contacted me a couple of years ago, I want to say 2011, and he was uh, talking about how he was a, he is, he's a great admirer of my work. He sent me a bunch of those novels he worked on. He was like, no, he was basically to show me that he was on the level and to be like, I'm not just some schmuck, you know, I've got (laughs) work to my name. And he had this vision for, he wanted to make his own kaiju universe his own kaiju like like a like his own kaiju universe his own kaiju novels and and he so I was like I, this is character i really want to create called nemesis and the first book will be project nemesis and he and i i don't know i just i got a good vibe from him uh, he you know agreed to pay me so um <laughs> yeah. so we just you know he he sent me, you know, some details and he was like, well, here's kind of what the general gist of the story is. And here's what I want the character to look like. And if you could just do some illustrations and come up with a, come up with this. Well, he, he just wanted to create some branding around the character and really make the character um, a sort of iconic in her own right. So, yeah, that's kind of where it started. And I remember her specifically working on the design for the character while I was in Atlanta for the first time back in 2011. Also, at the same time, working on the first issue of Godzilla legends. So that was a whirl, that was a whirlwind year, but then, uh, yeah, he he made the novel. He made, I want to say he made five novels in the series. I'm a terrible professional. It's hard to remember <laughs> sometimes, but, uh, yeah. let's see. I'm actually looking at my shelf now. I think he was product nemesis project. Uh, 731 was the third one. Oh, uh, no. Project Nemesis, Project Mygo, Project 731, Project Hyperion, and Project Legion. And wow. yeah, that's it. And um, that kind of forms the Nemesis saga. And, and it's pretty exten- extensive because it eventually starts to incorporate other books in his series. Mm-hmm. Uh, kind of creates this kind of expanded universe thing. And yeah, he hasn't made a Nemesis book since Legion came out, which I believe came out, I want to say, last year. And we did make a comic based on it through uh, the company. The, the publishing company was American Gothic, but mm-hmm. that specifically was a publish, a comic publishing arm of Famous Monsters of Filmland, which I still to this day don't know why they didn't just call it Famous Monsters Comics and kept the branding <laughs> I think that was a little silly for them not to do that. It might have been one of the reasons why the comic didn't sell for crap. Um, (laughs) Well, you know, it's hard to get a comic noticed and it's extremely hard to get it distribution through diamond. I mean, diamond, I mean, as I understand it, red Red man is not being distributed through diamond. It's um, it's just being distributed directly from the publisher and uh, just because, like I said, it's just it's so hard to get your work out there because, I mean, you know this, I know this, the, the listeners know this. The comics industry is an Ouroboros eating its own <laughs> tail. Like, it's a, it's a industry that is strangling itself to death. <laughs> but, right. um, but, but it's been strangling itself to death for, like, 
uh, since the '90s and even before that. Mm-hmm. So, but that's a that's a topic for another day. But the, but the comic came out really nicely. I've still got I still have people who come up and get me to sign copies from for them, and they still ask me like, "When's the trade paperback coming out?" And I'm like, "Never." Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not my not my decision. Yeah, but that's that's Nemesis in a nutshell. Uh, the character is this. Um, is is a is sort of a, a you know this this anti-hero it's very much an anti-hero character she's an ex- uh, this super huge vicious creature that originally came from outer space was then cloned uh with human dna it's a there's a whole justification for it they didn't just they didn't just say like hey what happens if we do this um <laughs> right <laughs> it's sort of a sort of a biolante situation where there's a there's a really complicated string of logic associated with it as opposed to something like jurassic world fallen kingdom where they're like uh hey uh you know how you have a gun with a laser on it? Well, what if instead of bullets, you shot a dinosaur? Um, <laughs> that movie right. sucked. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, no, so, but yeah, and she's, so as a result, she's this kind of confused giant monster who is genetically predisposed to punish humanity. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy yeah. stuff. Uh, and, and, and there's a lot of really great characters in it, too, that sort of um, help to contextualize Nemesis and the other monsters in the series. And I, I recommend them. They're a lot of fun. They're great little action movies in novel form. That's really cool. Hmm. And, you know, I, and again, I, I, I'll admit I have not picked up Nemesis, but I've seen I've seen it out there. I've always wanted to pick it up. but I just I've never had the opportunity. But. Sure. Um, I want to use your point. I think you brought up a very interesting point uh, a moment ago when you talk about just comic distribution and getting your stuff out there. Uh-huh. Um, it seems like kaiju and monsters is already kind of a, a niche market. Sure. And then you just kind of almost like subsection that into comics, which is another, you know, niche market. <laughs> yeah, so totally. For you as an artist and a creator, do you find it really difficult to, I don't want to say necessarily find work, but to get your to get more of your work out there when you're kind of in a niche of a niche of a niche. Uh, market. <laughs> but uh, I mean, what are your thoughts? I mean, do you find work pretty consistently or is it, you know, kind of a struggle? I mean, there's always a certain degree of struggle. Uh, I, I mean, early 2017, I actually didn't have a whole lot going on. Uh, I was really between gigs and I was really starting to feel it because I had, I hadn't been in that position in a long time where I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, I've got kind of nothing going on, and and I remember talking to my one of my colorists, my current colorist, uh, Goncalo Lopez, who's an amazing artist in his own right. He rem- very gently reminded me that, well, Matt, you know, it's it's highs and lows. It's, you know, he just reminded me it's feast and famine, highs and lows, and what you need to do is, I believe it's a line from the Witcher games, actually, which is, is it the Witcher? Oh, crap, I don't remember. Maybe it's something else, but the line is some men see an opportunity and take it other men make opportunities for themselves and (laughs) that's kind of the attitude you have to take because basically when you have a lull you have to try to then use that lull as an opportunity to find other work or make work for yourself and you know, work on a creator-owned project or something. And even if it's not something that's necessarily going to have a huge payout, it'll keep you busy and keep you from going crazy. There you go. Um, yeah. yeah, I I'm pretty fortunate in that being in a niche and a niche and a niche and a niche. <laughs> uh, I I I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that I'm people in this niche of a niche <laughs> yeah. know who I am. And Absolutely. when it comes yeah. to monster stuff people tend to think of me because I'm one of the only guys out there who's doing right. this stuff to the sheer volume that I've been doing it. Yep. Um, you've got Bob Eggleton, who's, uh, you know, he's an incredible painter and an amazing illustrator, but that's what he primarily does. He, he's taken, he's taken Kaiju and made fine art out of it. And <laughs> as for me, where I, I tend to be a little more poppy, y- younger targeted, you know, kind of cartoonishy anime sort of stuff. And that, that, that has an audience turns out. Yeah. I love um, it. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's <laughs> thank great. you. Uh, but just, yeah. I mean, as for just getting work and stuff, 
sometimes you just got to take the jobs you can get and just wait f- and, and, and either wait for something new to come along or make your own opportunities and make your own, make your own work and make your own mark. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, cause, cause IDW only, uh, they had the Godzilla license for a solid six years, I think maybe a little less than that. Wow. If you consider take the publishing dates into consideration, but in late 2016, they basically lost the license. Still not entirely sure uh, what happened, but the point is they didn't have it. So at that point I was like, Oh, that's, that's kind of it. And I thought like, Oh, I guess, huh? Well now what? And you know, every, yeah. everybody, everybody goes through that though. And I've, I thankfully have cultivated a relationship with my Japanese publisher who were, they were putting out the Japanese editions of the Godzilla comics that I worked on using me as a wow. springboard because I know this genre and I love it so much that I love it enough to uh, to pay my own way out to Tokyo so that I can help promote their books. <laughs> and and then that cultivated itself into a new relationship through them with Subaraya Productions, which is how we got Redman. And Redman is pretty much all I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. That is really cool. Well, thank you. Again, on your on, on what you said about your art style and stuff, actually, I, I ran into um, uh, Jeff Zorno, this mm. past weekend at uh, the Raleigh Supercon. And, yeah. Uh, and I know he worked with you on uh, 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 Rulers of Earth. And uh, he's got, again, he, he did a great job on the series. Um, sure. You know, on the, in between issues and stuff, what you're doing. But I've I've always pinpointed your art out as like, I was like, why is it? Why do I feel like it's different than um, <laughs> primarily like the Dark Horse series or, or any other uh, Godzilla art that I've seen? And again, you correct me if I'm wrong, because maybe you've got a secret and I'm just not noticing it. But the only thing <laughs> I've been able to see is that I feel like you give a lot of the creatures such life in their eyes, like such a humanity to their to their being. And maybe that's the anime uh, aspect mm. you're talking about, but. But but what is it that you try and do that kind of brings a lot of character to these creatures? Because I've I've thought about it a ton of how do you make a monster series consistently in comics and not let it feel repetitive of just them going around smashing buildings? Like how do you really build character through creatures? Um, what, what are your thoughts on that? That's a really interesting subject that I've been thinking. I uh, well I think about it a lot uh, because it's part of my job. Um, well, it's six to one, half dozen of the other. Because yes, I'm a I I I really grew up on anime. I was super into anime and manga for a really long time. I've fallen out of it just a tiny bit because I just it's just hard to keep up with new media as you get older and you get more responsibilities. It, and and especially when you have a job like mine where you have to sit down and you have to work all the time <laughs> and i can only multitask so much i've got jaws 2 running uh on on uh youtube right now because the meg is coming out soon and i sort of wanted to oh, get man. in that sharky feel that sharky <laughs> vibe but it's also not an especially good movie so i can sort of run it in the background <laughs> and only kind of half pay attention so i, I would actually have to cont- i would actually have to say that my biggest influence as far as the way i draw monsters actually really comes from Ricardo Delgado's work on Age of Reptiles, which was a Dark Horse comic from the 90s, which he's actually doing new versions of today. But Delgado is also a storyboard artist, uh, and he's worked on a number of films and TV series, including the unmade version of the American Godzilla from 1994. And uh, he also uh, worked pretty extensively on... If I remember correctly, he worked on the Disney dinosaur CG animated movie from the early 2000s. Oh, wow. uh, so, which of course has these dinosaurs that are ve- that are very realistically proportioned, but they also are very expressive and have very human-looking eyes and faces. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, but it, with Age of Reptiles, it was a very it's a silent book. Like, there's no dialogue. It's just images, but the mark of i think a great storyteller is someone who can tell a story entirely through images rather than words obviously you know the, mostly for comic book artists I'm, obviously i'm not saying that uh, a writer should just be able to <laughs> uh, draw but you know what i mean um yes, uh, a, a great yep. comic artist can tell a story just through art which is kind of what i'm doing with red man there's very little dialogue in red man very little narration it's mostly action but i try to convey 
certain emotions and feelings through these characters and through the settings and environment. And that's something that Delgado did amazingly well in Age of Reptiles. Uh, the first one of his I read was called Tribal Warfare. And it's about these competing clans of Tyrannosaurs and Deinonychus or, you know, raptors, essentially. And the, every character is a fully fleshed out, fully realized character. Uh, and they're visually distinct from one another. They have personalities and they're dinosaurs. And they, in the way Delgado, if you go guys listening, go, go look for age of reptiles and go look for tribal warfare. And you look at the way he draws dinosaurs. You're going to be like, Oh, I see where Matt got everything. <laughs> I see exactly where Matt gets his inspiration from. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I just, uh, I just, to me, I, I look at other, I look at some of the other Godzilla books that IEW did and they did some really great stuff, but sometimes the monsters will just feel kind of stiff and they'll feel like they were plucked from the films, from, from screenshots of the films or something. I, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it mm -hmm. means that this character, they don't really exist as characters. And that's also right. not a hundred percent necessary depending on the story you're telling. Like the Godzilla anime that's out on Netflix right now, Godzilla is not much of a character in that. He's just a force driving the plot. Mm -hmm. uh, or Shin Godzilla is another great example. Godzilla's not really a character. He's just a force, this, this force, right. this antagonistic right. force. No real personality in either of those versions, but he's visually compelling and terrifying because he's so omnipresent and there's just constant looming threat. So again, it depends on the story you're trying to tell. Yeah. But I just personally prefer my monsters to be a little more, have a little more character to them. Agreed. I agree. Yeah. I, mean, I think that really shows again through uh, what you and Chris Mowry did through uh, Rulers of Earth. That, that was Thank one you. of my top monster books, man. I really loved it. And I was really saddened when it ended. I was, I was very <laughs> broken. It's like, man, yeah. I just want to keep going. But um, yeah, hey, it was the longest running Godzilla comic of all time, though, to this, to That's this right. point. So that was, it's awesome. Probably, uh, probably, I don't, I, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to speak in absolutes, you know, only a Sith deals in absolutes, but hey, uh, I don't know if anyone's ever going to do that again, because the franchise itself is molded in such a way that, man, you really gotta, you really gotta want it to yeah. make something like that happen. And and, you know, working with Toho, I've always maintained that working with Toho is not, it, it's only as difficult as you make it. Like, mm -hmm. if you just learn to work with them and learn to work and learn their rhythms and what they are, what they want and what they don't want, you can make something like these long running IDW books that were really great and had a lot of good stuff in them. It's just, again, I just don't know if anybody's ever going to be inclined to do that again and to make an extensive God long running Godzilla comic series. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. I well, I yeah. actually, it was a while back. I had to been like two, three years ago when I, I think I was like on issue 14. I don't know what I was on, but yeah. anyway, but uh, I remember texting Chris Mowry and saying, dude, this is awesome. It's, it's playing out just like a Godzilla movie, you know, it's <laughs> like, great. So, uh, cause I loved all, I could just felt like you guys were taking so many elements and again, just drawing out the story. But again, it was just really fun to like see the aliens come into play, the military, <laughs> the American Godzilla. I was like, it was just there. You're touching on all these different monsters. Favorite cover was issue two because I was like, he's finally gonna beat the snot out of Zilla. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was it was great. So the, yeah. all the whole series. But I agree, man. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly that uh, that's gonna be a, a hard task at uh, getting it longer than 25. But we'll do what what. Speaking of, you know, Godzilla Rulers of Earth and, and, and other projects that we've done, and we've mentioned several already on the podcast, but what has been your favorite project so far? But what is also like your dream project? Mm, interesting thought. Um, <laughs> favorite project so far, I usually like I'm, I'm having a blast on Redman, mm -hmm. but I would say that my favorite project I've done is probably issue one of Godzilla Rage Across Time which is the issue where uh, I worked again with Jeremy Robinson, the creator of Nemesis. Uh, and it was his, his first, his first like actual, he finally got to do a Godzilla project was something he had wanted to do for a really long time. And I got him in <laughs> and we did issue one and 
he had initially had this pitch where it was, he wanted to do like a five issue miniseries of Godzilla set in ancient Japan and, mm-hmm. you know, with samurai and all that stuff, not necessarily during the Sengoku Jidai, which was the warring States period, but mm-hmm. that kind of vibe and that kind of feel. And I, and I floated that to the editor, Bobby Kernow and asked him, Hey, uh, you know, what do you think of this? And he said, Oh, that actually kind of lines up with a project that we're working on right now. So, you know, the sort of Godzilla in time thing. So yeah, if you guys want to do it, put, put a pitch together. So I wrote Jeremy back and I said, Jeremy, can you get this down to one issue? (laughs) (laughs) So, so yeah, he, he, he did it though. He pulled it off with flying colors and it really, it reads like a complete story. And the, uh, yeah. And, and the big thing that was a lot of fun was that I got to, I got to do the entire book in this sort of faux ukiyo-e Japanese woodblock style with very – maybe one, or like one page I didn't do it that – I didn't do that because it was uh, for reasons. But the um, <laughs> majority of the page is like I really studied Hiroshige and Hokusai and these other classic Japanese artists to really try to get that vibe. And then I uh, got – then the colors were mostly, again, handled by Goncalo Lopez with a little bit of help from Paul Hanley. Mm-hmm. And – uh, they and I really tried to direct them as much as I could to be like, okay, like look at these old woodblock drawings and try to get that kind of watery, runny, airy, light feeling vibe from them. And yeah, that's 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 what we did. And that was probably my favorite project just because it was so it was from beginning to end, it was just very creatively fulfilling and cool. and it was a lot of fun. That sound, that is awesome. I actually have not picked that one up, but now I have no choice but to go check that out. <laughs> that is awesome. And uh, what about a dream project? Dream project. Well, I've got a couple. It's just it's like the favorite <laughs> character thing. It's like I just yeah. don't have any one. I'd love to really take a crack at doing a full Power Rangers book. I Ooh. did a cover for Boom for Go Go Power Rangers number one. Now you talking about classic Rangers or a certain era? <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. I think the classic Rangers would probably be a nice safe bet, but honestly, uh, I don't even know if I'd want to do a full book. I just would want to do like a little short mini story for one of their anthologies, one of their, one of their annuals. It's just, um, man, it's really difficult getting in on that because there's just so many artists who are (laughs) looking to work on that and they're all so good. So you gotta wait your turn. Um, (laughs) But you know, I'd really like to take a crack at Devil Dinosaur one day. Oh, that'd um, be amazing. Oh. I would love I would absolutely love that. It's just again, it it working for Marvel, you know, you can't just it, it, they, they have a very much don't call us, we'll call you mentality. So you've got to, you know, it's it's all about who you know and it, it, you know, like I said, tough industry, tough industry. I've got an original comic I've been wanting to do for a while. I really just want to do an Ultraman book as well, like a proper big Ultraman story. Yeah. I got to say, oh, uh <laughs> another dream Marvel project would be doing a sort of a reinterpretation adaptation of the, the Japanese Spider-Man, Emissary of Hell, I think oh, is what cool. people tend to <laughs> tend to call it. Awesome. I I would love to do that so much. I did like a a print just for fun of like how it would look stylistically. And yeah. I, I posted that online. I think I did that last year. And that was a lot of fun. And um, last but not least, I would love to do a proper follow-up series to the Marvel Godzilla book. Oh, like, dude. set it in the current <laughs> Marvel universe. Like, yes. you know, with all the current characters who are, like, real big right now with Miss Marvel and squirrel girl and you know all the all those characters i think it'd be really fun to like have godzilla show up and it's and it is the marvel godzilla like it's the big he's got the big head he's got the green skin he's got the weird red eyes and everything and he's and just you know just see how the modern marvel universe would react to him because they've they've done some stuff in the last couple of years where like I think they closed the book on Godzilla in the Marvel Universe where they were like, oh, I think it was an uncanny X-Men. This Godzilla like creature showed up and there was a lot of lip service to this possibly actually being the Marvel Godzilla. And then he's violently killed by Archangel. So <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> it's like, I'm just like, okay, that's, 
that's that's like that's just like having superman show up in uh show up in your book and then like as a cameo and then violently killing him as like yeah, a it's like it's like a, it's like a joke <laughs> and i'm like cool yeah. so you know that's what i would do is i would have like a proper like a proper bring back godzilla and just have the marvel universe react to him like they did in the original book Yes, that would be amazing. It would uh, it would revive Dum Dum Dugan to the highest. Oh, extent. yes, <laughs> absolutely. Bring back Dum Dum. Oh, that would be that would be awesome. But yeah, you know, on the on the point of Marvel, I honestly, when Marvel announced Monsters Unleashed, like mm. I was like, well, surely they're gonna bring Matt Frank on to Monsters <laughs> Unleashed. But it never happened. I was like, I nope. was disappointed the entire time. Again, I I thought it was an okay series and. I will admit, though, that Kid Kaiju is like my my secret love of a character at Marvel. Even though the book was doomed from the beginning, it was just it, it never took off. But I was like, why didn't they ever contact the guy who actually like really is the expert on Marvel art? I'm sorry, on monster. Art. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I was I was just like, I mean, I, I like David Baldy. I think he did the art for for the most mm. of the run, and and Colin Bunn did a, a pretty good job writing it, but. Uh, I was like super shocked that they didn't call, you know, you or even Zorno or, or is it Zorno or Zorno? Zorno, like he says. Okay. Well, he that's that, that's what he says. Zorno. Okay, Zorno. Yeah. Okay. Well, mm-hmm. I thought for sure they'd get one of you guys, but uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, sure. But- I mean, trust me, I sort of felt the same thing about Mar- uh, Monsters Unleashed, where I was like, oh, you know, it would be nice to have worked on that, but uh, I again, it's sort of like, you know, it. it I don't think I don't think for Marvel there's really anybody who's like they don't think like oh let's get a monster guy in on this right, right. you know that 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 isn't something that I think computes over there I think it's just who have we got who can draw monsters good but is like you know one of our regulars or is somebody who we know is a hot ticket right now yeah. and you know I, I i i actually wouldn't be surprised if the folks over at marvel weren't even aware of idw making godzilla books like oh. it it's i don't know i'm just i'm just saying that's kind of the way the industry goes sometimes is you're yeah. like oh yeah no i worked on godzilla books for six years and I'm like oh, i don't even know there were godzilla books <laughs> so it just it, it just happens sometimes but it, it, it's really not a big deal like i i sort of looked at it and i was like I, it would have been nice to work on this, but I also don't really know these characters. And I tried, I picked up the first issue and I was reading it and I'm like, see, I'm also kind of out of the loop when it comes to Mar- current Marvel stuff. Um, yep. And I'm like, I don't know who any of these characters are. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, same boat. yeah, and that's, that's a shame. That's a shame. Cause I, I like what they do. I'm just like, mm-hmm. I've got other stuff going on, but I, I, I'd like, <laughs> that's not to say I wouldn't want to do it. I'm just saying, you know, I, 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 I understand why that sort of thing happens. You can only, there's only so much art to go around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I get you, man. That, that makes sense. That totally makes sense. And, um, yep. well, let's, let's shift gears a little bit. Um, cause we're, we're running low on time and sure. we'll make sure we, we fit enough uh, time for, for both of these, uh, little tiny segments. I want to talk to you real sure. quick about your thoughts on the current state of like Kaiju in Hollywood and the monster verse that's being developed. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Are you liking it? You hating it? But then I also want to go into what me and James are our infamous question of character resurrection. <laughs> but let's uh, let's let's start with MonsterVerse, man. What are your thoughts on like Pacific Rim and the Kong mm-hmm. Skull Island and the <laughs> reboots and the Godzilla number two just got uh, the trailer just launched? I mean, you as a as a kaiju just fanatic. I mean, <laughs> how, how are you feeling about the MonsterVerse right now? Well, I'm pretty darn excited. Uh, I was hanging out with some folks today about uh, some some uh, some fellow fans today, and they were asking me what my opinion was. And I just I, I think that trailer for King of the Monsters really did an excellent job of capturing that dreamlike quality that Godzilla fans are kind of feeling right now, which is we never thought that this is where we would be at. And I, I thought Skull Island was extremely fun. I thought it was very, oh, yeah. very, very well done. I thought it was a lot of, a lot of re- pretty, pretty darn enjoyable movie. And I also really liked that we're getting a lot of weird non-franchise stuff, like, or, or rather, non. Uh, we're, we're we're getting a lot of other weirder, like, like not Godzilla stuff, like yeah. Rampage and the Meg and yep. uh, Colossal, which is an excellent, excellent movie highly recommend it that's the Anne hathaway joint from uh last year or the year before that i think 
Uh, that's really good. Uh, really great for Kaiju fans. Let's see. Uh, and of course, you know, Toho did Shin Godzilla. Shin Godzilla is, uh, I wouldn't say it's super high on my personal list. I, I've got my own personal list of Godzilla movies, but uh, mm-hmm. Shin Godzilla is at least a very interesting, very bold film. And yeah. it was a shot in the arm the franchise desperately needed, especially on the Japanese side of things. Because mm-hmm. one, one little thing I have noticed over the years is that when uh, American productions try to take Japanese pop culture and reinterpret it, the Japanese themselves are not super interested. Um, <laughs> it's very odd. Like the 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 American Godzilla movie, uh, the, the 2014 film, which personally I like, but I recognize that it's got some uh, it's got some flaws. Yeah, it uh, it did pretty good in Japan, like not not like amazingly well. And then Shin Godzilla came out and blew it out of the water. Like wow. Shin Godzilla did incredibly well in Japan. It was the best. It was the highest. Uh, it was the highest attended Godzilla movie uh, since the 1960s. Since like Godzilla. Since like Invasion of Astro Monster or something. Whoa, um, awesome. Yeah, I, I think a large part of that was also thanks to Hideaki Anno being the director. He's a super popular director. That was a very good call on their part. Yeah. No, I'm. 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 I'm cautiously optimistic about the genre at the moment i want to see more stuff coming out of japan though like yes we got shin godzilla and we got the godzilla anime but i want to see like more weird smaller stuff like i want to see more like where's gamera you know yes. like oh Lord, yes. where's where's daimajin you know where's where's <laughs> daimajin like i would love a, a proper daimajin revival with like a big samurai like like with modern production values and like a big man in suit daimajin that'd be rad <laughs> That's awesome and, and just other weird stuff like just to get more just to get more stuff out there also uh we also have to note that uh you know really the kaiju movies that are doing really well right now are Kong and Godzilla. Pacific Rim, uh, the first Pacific Rim, which I love that movie. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a it's a lot of fun. Didn't do super well, you know. Right. It did it did pretty good in China, which is why they greenlit the sequel, and the sequel tanked, and yeah. because it's not a very good movie. Um, <laughs> and uh, I mean, even in China, it didn't do well, uh, as I understand it. I'm, I may be wrong about that, but uh, mm. yeah. And I think it's because the Chinese <laughs> Chinese audiences are a little bit savvier than um, I think the production companies give them credit for. They're like, we know they know when they're being pandered to, and uh, mm-hmm. I think that's kind of what we're seeing right now with a lot of these productions that are being pro- co-produced by Chinese production companies and Chinese audiences are like, well, we liked it the way it was when it was like, just the story was what was important as opposed to, well, let's shove a bunch of Chinese crap in this. <laughs> um, right. And in their, even their audiences are like, like with Iron Man three, there was a whole thing with Iron Man three where they were like, what's going on? Um, <laughs> yeah. <I got laughs> but, anyway. Uh, so that's kind of where I am, you know, cautiously optimistic. I'm hoping the stuff, you know, I'm hoping we can keep getting this stuff for as long as we can. But the thing I don't want to caution my fellow fans uh, as much as possible is this could all go away guys. Yeah, I, yeah. I lived through two separate droughts. <laughs> this can all go away. So that's right. I love it while it's here. Love yes. It while it's here. That's good. Well, okay. That is again, I, I agree with you, man. And uh, final question, man, infamous question yep. that we ask all of our guests and I dig uh, it. Character resurrection, man. If you could have any character, doesn't matter if it's an American superhero, uh, manga, anime, um, or kaiju in this case, you know. But who is a character that you really think could use a fresh coat of paint or completely overhaul, um, you know, save the name? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, and just really bring back into into relevance. So, who? What are your thoughts, man? Who would you bring back? I'm literally looking at my shelf right now, looking oh. at all these characters <laughs> that I have. Uh, I said Gamera earlier. I definitely want that, but that's not really my, that's not a pithy enough answer. Um, <laughs> mm, oh, uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, I got a good one. I got a good one. Okay. Bring back the Giver, Bio oh Booster God. Armor Giver. Where's Dude, that franchise? Oh, I love that. I have dreamed oh. of them redoing that series. That is a perfect answer. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome if 
okay, like the Steve Wang uh, Guyver movies um, are fun. Like the first one is very silly, and the second one is a little more cool and like and more martial artsy. Right. Wouldn't it be cool? Okay, the Guyver manga is still going on in Japan. Uh, they did an anime a few years ago, but it didn't continue. They they ended it after a certain point, but the manga is apparently still going. Wow. Wouldn't it be awesome if they did like a live action Guyver series with like Steve Wang coming back to do the suits and all, all practical effects. Like all, yeah. I don't want to see that CGI crap. I want to yeah. see like that levels up, but I want it to be a proper television series or heck get somebody in Japan to do it. Get, get yeah. Toei or somebody to fork over the cash for that and do like a cool proper live action guyver series that would be oh. rad where's that yeah oh man yeah. <laughs> I, yeah i have been praying for a guyver reboot somewhere over here in the states that is that is awesome that is <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, i'm glad you appreciate yes. it. i'm glad you approve i'm glad you approve dude yes like i at, when i was a kid i had no idea who mark hamill was <laughs> I, knew, I knew who luke skywalker was but i was like i just know that the cop in the guyver dies in the first one <laughs> and i was like oh dude you're know, looking back like Luke, That's, no. It was but, so uh, crazy that they were like they kept putting him in the marketing as being like they would put his <laughs> face next to the Giver, and it's yeah. like he's not the Giver though. Yeah, he's the yeah, cop who a, turns into a, a bug. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that was awesome. That that is that is great. I treasure that answer, Matt. That is, that yeah. is awesome, yeah. man. That is yeah. great. Oh man, well, <laughs> dude, well, time is basically upon us, uh, dude. Sweet. How can people get behind you and show you, sh- show you some love? Uh, show you some love. <laughs> so, <laughs> show me some love. Show, show me show what you got, and uh, get behind you. Like your Facebook page, or you know, what's the best hmm. way to to get behind you, man? Well, pretty soon you're going to be able to find me on mattfrankart.net. I bought that domain. I just have to get this stupid thing made. Probably do that later this year, uh, since I'm so busy with Redman Volume Two. Which, for those of you who don't know, Redman is about a Ultraman-style superhero who's going around fighting monsters, but he's fighting them in a weird, like, desolate landscape where you're not really sure, like, where this is or what's happening. It's kind of this weird dreamlike quality to it, but he's an obscure superhero from Japan, and we did a revival comic. Which you can find that if you go to Facebook and look for uh, official Redman, or just Redman the Kaiju Hunter. Mm-hmm. And you should be able to order a copy uh, through the uh, official website, which you can find through the Facebook page. Um, oh, cool. Beyond cool. that, uh, yeah, mattfrankart.net, uh, Kaiju Samurai on DeviantArt is where I usually dump my art. Mm-hmm. I've got a Tumblr and Twitter, which are both Spankzilla85, very tasteful. Um, <laughs> and I've got my Instagram, which is Mattzilla85. I just launched my own YouTube page. If you just if you just search YouTube for Matt Frank, you'll find it pretty easy. Uh, we did a uh, reaction. My wife and I did a reaction video to Godzilla King of the Monsters. And last I checked, I think it's getting close to 3,000 views. And I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's pretty cool. I appreciated that. And uh, I'm, I'm going to start adding more stuff, more content, like drawing videos and unboxing videos. You know, oh. just, just, just doing it for fun, really. So yeah, just you know, give me a follow there and hit the, you gotta hit the stupid bell though. Gotta <laughs> hate that. And yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty much it. That's where you can find me. I'm also, oh, that's right. Real quick. I'm also on one of us.net as a frequent contributor, as a, as a, as a film reviewer. Um, I, uh, we did Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. We did Teen Titans Go. We did the, I think we're doing the Meg here pretty soon. We'll see. And then uh, I've also got a podcast on there called The Giganticast, where I just oh, I yes. talk about the stuff that I like talking about. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, you can also find me every uh, week, like uh, two or three videos over on RageSelect.com. Uh, that's all YouTube Let's Plays, where we just play video games. Not, not, uh, not safe for kids. We are very, well, well no. I'm both one of us and Rage Select. We are very <laughs> sweary. We say a lot of violently inappropriate stuff <laughs> so just be aware gotcha. i'm glad that you gave that <laughs> that disclosure that is awesome <laughs> very cool awesome. yeah well matt it has truly been a pleasure having you on the show man and we uh, we again appreciate your time and look forward to seeing you do awesome things in both the comic realm manga whatever it is man or the kaiju universes definitely need artists like you so it's it's awesome so guys get behind mac frank if you can 
And uh, guys, again, thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Clay Pauly, and James Hussey will be back next time, I promise. But he's <laughs> on vacation with his family, and that uh, we wish him the best. Guys, we love you, and thanks for tuning in. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll catch you guys in the next one.